We are going to talk about x-referencing in this video here. So I've gone to Google Earth and I've found a video or an image of Stuart Hall on UD's campus here and you can see down at the bottom we've got a visual scale as well. So I took a screen capture of this and saved that image. I also went to the university's website and found an image of the floor plans for this building and further down here we've got some room dimensions as well and I took this image, I saved it, I converted it to a PNG and I uh, made the background transparent. So I've got a PNG image of that, I've got an image of my aerial view. So I'm going to create a new drawing here and make sure the units are set to decimal. I'm going to go to insert, references, attach, and I've got these in the same location as my drawing. And I'm going to add the Google Maps PNG and we'll just specify it at 000, scale of 1, specify it on screen and you can see this thing is pretty small. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is scale this thing using the scale command. So go to home, scale, select the image using a window, pick a base point anywhere you want and then we're going to use a reference. Now the reference length is going to be this visual scale down here so I'm going to pick from endpoint to endpoint and make that 50. And so now if I use a distance command we can see that this thing is about 50 feet. Uh, so what we could do now is measure things like the length of this building uh, or the length of one of the wings which is about 150 something feet and the width straight across is uh, roughly 50 feet as well. So those wings are about 50 feet by 150 feet. I'm going to pull in the other image as well. So insert, attach. We'll grab the Stewart floor plan. And I'm going to specify where I want it just so I don't overlap things. Uh, if we click on this, hopefully we can get the background transparency to work. Uh, I'm going to scale this thing up. So we'll use the scale command. Select the window again pick a base point. We're going to use the reference again. We're going to reference off of this edge straight up here. And then instead of giving it a length, we're going to use this points feature. And we're going to come down here to our drawing and click from that point over to this point. And what that will do is it'll scale our drawing. Uh, so I'm going to grab this. You can see the transparency is working. If I click background transparency on, uh, the PNG image has transparency. I'm going to move this thing from this point over to right here. And then I'm going to rotate it uh, from that point. I think that's going to look about right. So you can see that now these images are overlaid. Um, you can kind of see they don't match up exactly, but we are we are quite close. Uh, I think this image may need to be shrunk just a little bit and moved a little bit, um, but we have a pretty good estimate. And if we were wanting to do quantity takeoff on this, for instance, if we wanted to measure these rooms, we could do a distance command. And over here is a typical room. So from this corner to this corner, it's about 21 feet. And that probably includes wall thicknesses. And from that corner to that corner, it's about 11 feet. And if we go to the website, the website claims that these rooms are about nine and a half feet by sixteen and a half feet. So we're close. I mean that probably also includes the thicknesses of the walls and those are CMU walls. So you've got um, maybe a foot there to take off and the exterior wall is probably thicker as well. Uh, but this is useful because if we wanted to we could do layouts of a, a site development. So a good example of that might be if we zoom out a bit and go over towards the city of Oakwood. They actually had a, uh, a new residential complex that went in here. So we could have grabbed an image of this, laid it out, and, and done some preliminary lot development showing, you know, Far Hills here, 
Old River Trail, uh, the sports complex, and we could present this in a, a nice format, maybe a summary to a city council meeting to try to convince them to let us build the sub-development if that's what your company does. Um, if we go back to the drawing here and go to insert and click on references down here, we have all of our file references and you can see these things have saved paths. So you just need to be careful when you're using X references that you save these things in this similar location and when you go to transfer this to somebody you also need to have all of the files that are referenced as well. So a convenient way to do that, let's save this drawing, would be to clean up our directory here a little bit. So I'll get rid of my backups for my drawing. Oops, we're probably going to have to ex escape out of this, so we'll close that drawing. Let's delete our backup. And let me get rid of the, the GIF file that I don't need. So I've got my maps, my Stewart floor plan, and my drawing. So we could take these, send them to a zip file, grab that, and I'm just going to move it to my desktop just so it's in a different spot, and then extract it open it up and then open this drawing and you can see the X references still work uh, had we had we done this a different route and just grab this drawing and copy pasted it to our desktop and opened it up you can see that these relative paths are not showing up because when I copied it I didn't bring those along and put them in the same file location so if you're going to deal with X referencing you may need to do some additional research but they're very convenient to pull in images and other sources and even drawings from other locations and use them and the information contained therein